so I just finished playing this really charming little game called Helltaker. This is a short puzzle game about a man trying to achieve his dream of having a polygamous relationship with a bunch of demon women. <laughs> so he heads down to hell to gather them up for his harem. That inherently is a goofy enough premise to have me personally interested, but what really got me to check out this game is its super, super enticing art design. When I saw some of these character designs, I immediately fell in love with its style. This is uh, about as up my alley as it gets. It's cute, moderately weeby, and the characters all have really adorable and fun, unique facial expressions. Uh, this is the stuff that I love to draw, except, well, this is of an actual high quality. <laughs> I mean, look at how cute these faces are, they're so expressive. Uh, there's so much life in these designs. I really love the exaggerated yet simple mouths. I like how they're drawn long and big, this, it feels very energetic. And also, I mean, come on, the eyes, they're perfect. I, I hate to overuse the word, but they're also very, very effectively expressive. This art is sick, and it's all done by a guy who made the game his name is Lucas Piscors. I hope I pronounced that right. He's also known as Von Ripper. Uh, that's his name on YouTube. He's a really dope artist that draws a, a bunch of cool, cute stuff. Uh, I've got mad respect for this guy. His animations on YouTube are awesome. He's got some cool Skyrim stuff that he did like four and six years ago. And he's got this sick little series called Daystone. It's got three episodes out and the most recent one came out only eight months ago. So he's really been working hard, making video games, making a little series. Yeah, I mean, he's just got good animations and they're worth checking out if you haven't heard of him before. Dude's a great artist and his talent is on full display here in Helltaker. It was really cool seeing some insight on the creation of these characters. Really, overall, the design of everything in this game is just great. The in-game visuals are fantastic, uh, the border around everything is really, really cool. Oh, and I love how all the characters dance to the beat of the music. The music is also really good. It's done by an artist named Mitzi's. Uh, all the music is this real pounding EDM which gives off this appropriately greasy yet slick vibe. This game first caught my eye when I saw some fan art of it, and really this is the exact type of game that begs to be drawn over and over again by its fans. Really it's the type of game that I played so that I could make fan art of it myself. I always feel weird if I draw characters from stuff that I haven't played or seen before, so I had to play this game at least so that I could draw these characters. So what's the game like? Well, it's a puzzle game of a style that I've never played before, so it seems unique to me. But uh, puzzle games are definitely one of my biggest blind spots as far as video game genres go, so uh, this type of causal game, it may have been done before, but either way, I, I thought it was a pretty solid one and with a decent amount of challenge. Like I said, the game is pretty dang short, it, it took me about two hours to finish. There are only ten levels, but even with its tiny length, I, I still thought that there was a, a satisfying amount of challenge. You have a certain number of steps that you can take, and each step is called will. It takes one will to kick stuff like blocks, this moves them around, or you can kick skeletons for the same cost and move them around or shatter them. You gotta spend your will wisely and figure out the best way to get past all of these obstacles and clear a path so that you can chat it up with some nice demon ladies. Throw in some keys that you need to get and boom, you got yourself a pretty solid puzzle game. I beat most of the levels without looking up a walkthrough, but admittedly, because I am a moron, I used it for one level. Uh, level 7, I, I don't know, I, I got confused, cut me some slack. Besides, I'm just here for the pretty drawings. Interestingly, the developer must have figured that there'd be a lot of people like me playing the game, so there's actually the ability to skip every puzzle. It's even kind of made fun of in the actual dialogue. Uh, I, I decided not to do that though and just use a walkthrough because I, I thought maybe just in case I didn't want to miss out on anything that you couldn't get if you skipped through all of them. Well anyways, once you get past a level, you have to engage in some deadly dialogue decision making. Uh, say the wrong thing and you die, and each death has a unique and amusing little description to it. But if you pick the right dialogue option, then the lovable demon waifu will join your harem. The dialogue is fun, I got a solid chuckle out of it more than a few times, and I love just how unconventional everything is and how each demon joins you for ridiculous and different reasons. 
I love how death is so common down here, but everybody kind of treats it like it's not a big deal, specifically the girls. You get to experience each of the waifu's personalities not only through their dialogue from when you meet them, but also through asking them for life advice during the levels. Uh, this is where some of the best interactions take place. Uh, my favorite waifu of all of them might be Zadrata the Bitch Demon. Her design is uh, top notch. This is exactly my kind of character right here. And yes, sure, I know that I have bad taste, but hey, I like my bad taste. Her dialogue is enjoyable, and she bounces off of my other favorite character very well, Melina the Sour Demon. She's a nerd who plays video games, and I can't help but find some kinship there, uh, similarly to everyone else who played this game, I'm sure. Really, when I say favorite, it's a pretty loose statement. I mean, I dig all of these characters a lot, like Cerberus here, who is just three mischievous cat girls. Justice, the awesome demon, who is very endearing with her expressive and bombastic attitude. Uh, you got Satan herself, Lucifer, the CEO of Hell. She's got a little uh, Sundere action going on if you're into it. You break through her icy exterior by offering her pancakes, incidentally. Lucifer loves pancakes. Uh, then you got Pandemoncia, the tired demon. Uh, she has some pretty funny lines. There's Azazel, a curious angel exploring the depths of hell. And, oh, of course, and there's Amodius, the lustful demon, tailor-made for the super weebs out there. It's a colorful cast of characters, no doubt, and even if they don't have a large amount of dialogue, their personalities are still well-defined enough to, to leave me with an endearing impression. Also, all the characters are very sharply dressed, and I like that a lot. Even the main character here has that dope all-white suit with the red undershirt and the uh, red lapel flower. And it's cool just seeing each of the demon girls with their own spin on this slick demon formal uniform. That's cool to look at. Alright, so from this point on, I'm going to spoil the endings. Uh, it's a fun little game, and it's got some neat little surprises to it. So, if this looks cool from what I've shown already, I'd suggest checking it out. It's free also, so that's that's a big factor in why I, uh, I definitely do recommend it. It can't hurt. So anyways, the last demon to enter our little polygamous relationship is Judgment, the High Prosecutor. So you meet her by finishing the last puzzle level where you and your harem are trying to get out of hell. After beating it, you get captured, and now it's time to be judged. And we need to now try to escape that judgment. And what's so cool about this is this part right here, this last level, it's not a puzzle. Uh, this is a skill-based little experience uh, that's honestly pretty dang fun. You've got to avoid these chains and kick these other ones, and it's really not super easy. It's, it's perfectly challenging. It's not so hard that it becomes tedious, but it's not so easy that it wasn't a challenge at all. It took me probably I'd say 20 minutes to finish the whole thing. I thought it was pretty dang enjoyable. And if the whole game was just this mechanic, I would have been happy with it. But I definitely do commend this game for doing something unique and different. I, I definitely didn't expect this puzzle game to turn into an action game at the very end. So after beating this stage, you are greeted with a fun little epilogue where you have made pancakes for all the wonderful demons you've gathered together. On a side note, well, a, a big side note, there's this Russian band called Satan Bakes Pancakes, and they're super good. Um, it just makes me wonder, is this an intentional reference that the creator was attempting to make? Because it kind of feels that way. Uh, someone mentioned this in the Steam Community tab, so I listened to the band before making this video, and I think they're awesome. Uh, I'll play a bit for you right here, because I, I don't think that I'll get taken down for it. Yeah, man, I dig this kind of stuff. Sure, I can't understand it, but I think it still slaps. After walking around and giving pancakes to all your waifus, you find out that Cerberus has messed up big this time, apparently warranting a visit from the police. Once you open the door, you offer the police officer pancakes, and then the game ends. And uh, I think that it's fun that it implies that maybe this officer became the newest member of this harem. Like I said, it's a fitting end, right? Another ending is, well, 
towards the beginning of the game, and I guess this could be debatable as whether or not it's an ending, but if you answered the angel's question as to why you're in hell with because you're looking for angels, she'll say, well, this is no place, but I have a better place where you can find angels, and then she takes you to heaven. And the other ending is unlocked by getting all of the runes, which is by finding them in levels 5, 6, and 7. So each puzzle has like one way to get through it, and I guess 5, 6, and 7 have two different ways to get through it. If you find that secret, more confusing second way to get through it, then you're rewarded with another rune, hiding under one of the marked blocks. Each rune gives you the set of arrows and they show up in your pause menu. When you're in the epilogue section, you can stand in the middle of this uh, chic little pentagram rug and input the directions of the runes. Once you do that, you will open up a portal to the realm of Beelzebub, the Great Fly, who is the narrator of the entire story. Once you walk into it, you spend all of eternity in here, and Beelzebub then turns into a fun little bug waifu, and you live forever in this banished void with a cute bug girl. What I like about all of these endings is no matter what, it seems like the main character really hasn't won. It's a hard life for a man trying to please a harem of demons, and maybe this whole thing was much more trouble than it was worth. I love this little line at the end. But life is full of suffering no matter how you live it, so you might as well have fun while you're at it. I dig it. Uh, those are words to live by right there. Dropping a little wisdom at the end of the game. That's nice. In closing, this game was a fun way to spend an afternoon. Uh, it was a great way for me personally to get some ideas rolling in my noggin for drawings I'd like to draw. That's cool stuff, man. These character designs are what it's all about for me. They're cleverly made, too, like how Cerberus is three cute cat girls instead of a three-headed dog, or how Justice the Awesome Demon is blind. Uh, there's cool stuff in this game. The puzzles are fun, the gameplay is clever, and at the very least, it's really cool to look at. I don't know, overall it's pretty dope for a simple little waifu collector. It was a short, fun, satisfying little ride, and I'd recommend it. Alright, see you later. I'm gonna go draw some drawings now. Peace.